Electricity storage systems are the set of methods and technologies used to store electricity. The need for electricity storage is due to an imbalance in supply and demand on the electrical grid due primarily to an increase in renewable energy generation. These supply and demand discrepancies occur because renewables are intermittent, meaning electricity isn't produced when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing, even though consumers still require electricity in these renewable downtimes. Currently, Grids distribute electricity in real time, meaning electricity is being consistently produced to meet consumer demand. Electricity storage gives grid operators the flexibility to use electricity that otherwise would be wasted. This grid flexibility is highly sought after and has the potential to transform how we produce and consume electricity and is therefore being widely researched and tested. There are many different forms of electricity storage, the most common being battery, pumped hydro, compressed air and flywheel. Currently, the largest challenges in implementing electricity storage at the grid scale are the cost and the infancy of the technology that's electricity storage. Blood types are inherited, just like you inherit your eye color, or your hair texture, so you get a gene from each parent, and that determines what the child's blood type is gonna be. There's sort for blood types. There is, there is A, type A, type B, type AB, and type O. The only difference is what sugar molecule is added to that point. There are some studies that show that the reason that A, B, O and AB have been distributed the way they were was because of forces that they think of primarily connected to the organism that causes malaria. It turned out to be that people who had type O were actually able to survive an attack of malaria. It appeared that malaria organism was more readily able to attach to red cells that were type O or type B, and actually kill those patients before they have a chance to reproduce. Those people who had type O actually would get sick, but wouldn't die, and had an opportunity to reproduce, and that's how the gene goes forward. And then, if you look at a map of where malaria is now and where the different peoples are, you can see that the type O was followed. There is where there's malaria, A and B has gone to colder climates where malaria wasn't a problem, and then AB was just, you know, combination of the races. Sweetened condensed milk is a good ingredient for sweet recipes because of all the added sugar, about 25% by weight. But when sweetened condensed milk was invented in the 1800s, the original reason for adding sugar to the milk was not for flavor, but for protection against spoilage. And it works, even after you open the can, sweetened condensed milk keeps longer than fresh milk. That added sugar kills bacteria that would otherwise digest the milk and spoil it. The sugar kills not by poisoning the bacteria, but by a more direct physical process. It draws water out of the bacteria so the bacterial cells shrivel and die. Each bacterial cell has a sort of skin, technically, a membrane. Water can pass through this membrane pretty easily, but substances dissolved in the water can't. Water has a natural tendency to move toward any region where there's a high concentration of dissolved substances. A bacterial cell in a can of sweetened condensed milk finds itself immersed in an extremely concentrated solution of sugar. Water inside the cell will, therefore, pass out through the cell membrane into the sugar solution. The bacterial cell dehydrates and dies in a sea of sugary water. Sugar added to fruit has the same effect, that's the idea behind fruit preserves. 
other foods are preserved with salt, exploiting the same principle. What is precipitation? Clouds hold millions of tiny water droplets. Over time, a cloud can hold more and more tiny droplets of water and pieces of ice. Wind and temperature make the droplets and pieces bump into each other. They then group together, they get bigger and heavier until they are too heavy to stay in the cloud. They fall to the ground as something called precipitation. Precipitation can include rain, snow, hail or sleet. Precipitation can form into different types. This is because the differences in temperatures. If the air between the cloud and the ground is warm, the precipitation will fall as rain. If the rain freezes between the cloud and the ground, it becomes sleet. If the air is in the cloud and it blows very cold, the precipitation will fall as snow. Hail forms when ice crystals get blown upward inside of a cloud over and over. The ice will get bigger and bigger each time until it finally falls from the sky. Sleet is smaller than hail. Sleet falls in cold weather. Precipitation comes from storms. Thunderstorms are the most common type storm. They are caused when warm, wet air hits cold, dry air. The warm, wet air rises fast to form huge clouds. Humans are pretty lucky with the way we can communicate. Unlike animals, we have the perfect length necks and excellent control of our breaths. Both of these characteristics allow us to form words. Although animals can't talk like us, they still have special ways to communicate. For example, dolphins have one of the most sophisticated forms of communication. They make distinct whistling sounds that help identify themselves. Dolphins may also squeak or yelp depending on the situation. Nevertheless, each sound releases meaningful information. You have probably heard some birds say words just like us, but they are merely repeating what they hear. Most birds communicate through songs and squawks that can be beautiful for us to listen to. Other animals communicate without making a sound. Elephants show affection by wrapping their trunks around each other. Whales leap out of the water to send messages to their friends. Bees perform a special dance when they have located nectar in a tree. Even if it's just our pet dog wagging his tail or a pet cat purring, all animals have their own way to convey information to us and each other. There are 118 species of weaver birds, and most live in sub-Saharan Africa. While some species live on the open savanna and eat mostly seeds, others live in forests and prefer feasting on insects. Researchers looked at studies done on different species of weaver birds to examine the relationships between the diets, habits, and social behavior. They found that seed-eating birds living in the open savanna tended to forage in groups, 
nest in large colonies, and have multiple mates per breeding season. The insect-eating, forest-dwelling birds, on the other hand, were more likely to forage and nest alone, and have a single mate per season. These divergent social behaviors are likely influenced by the different diets and habitats. Working together makes it easier for birds that eat seeds out on the savanna to find spots with a large supply of seeds. There's also safety in numbers out on the open savanna, further incentivizing flocking. Their polygamous breeding may be a result of the smaller number of nesting sites in the savanna. By contrast, working together to find food wouldn't help forest dwelling, insect eating weaver birds as much, since insects tend to be more widely dispersed. There are a lot more suitable nesting sites in the forest, so these birds don't need to live in colonies, and monogamy makes sense for birds with more solitary lives. It seems that birds that eat bugs don't like to be bugged. Steam is water that's heated to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Believe it or not, steam is invisible, you can see right through it. If you look closely at the end of your kettle spout, you'll notice that the white stuff doesn't start right away. It begins billowing about half an inch away from the nozzle, with clear gas in between. This clear gas is the actual steam. The billowy white stuff is what the steam turns into when it hits the drier, cooler air of your kitchen. Those white billows are, in fact, clouds, not steam. In many ways, they are identical to the clouds you can see in the sky. The white color comes from tiny liquid water droplets that have condensed from the steam. More accurately, these billows are a type of cloud called a mixing cloud. These can form when two separate air masses with different temperatures and different amounts of water in them mix together. In the case of your kettle, the hot, steamy gas cools rapidly in the kitchen air, and this sudden coolness is what makes some of the vapor condense. Mixing clouds are pretty common, and they don't need to start with steam. You see mixing clouds when you, see your breath, on a cold winter day. You'll find them rising from a bowl of warm soup. Wherever there's a mixing cloud, you can bet some warm, moist air is mixing with air that's cooler and drier. In my view, it's impossible not to talk about wildlife, and not think about its role in livelihood. And I guess part of that is my own view, part of the research that I do in Africa. In most East and West Africa, I look at the role. All the humans rely on wildlife as the source of food, and also the source of income. And we talk about our wildlife, if we're talking about fish, we are talking about what is probably the single most important source of protein for human that across the globe. And, so, billions of, or more than a billion of people rely on fish as their primary source of animal protein, and most of these people living in poverty. So, the management of fish resource of wildlife in that sense causing incredibly important to livelihoods and health. And also, wildlife tourism is the multiple billion dollars industry, and in many places, such as Africa, South America, it can be the number one source of income. It can be the number one source of foreign income for economies.
When human females are pregnant, they're advised to stay away from alcohol, for fear of harming the fetus. And most parents refrain from giving their infants bottles full of whiskey or beer, for obvious reasons. But if you're a fruit fly, literally dousing your offspring in alcohol is apparently one of the best ways to protect them from danger, particularly from certain types of wasps. How and why? Let's back up a bit. First, certain types of wasps prey on fruit flies by injecting eggs inside fruit fly larvae. Unless an infected larva kills the wasp egg, it hatches and the wasp larva eats its way out from inside the fruit fly larva, killing it. One way for fruit fly moms to protect against this gruesome fate is to lay their eggs in an alcohol-soaked environment, such as fermenting fruit, when they see that parasitic wasps are around. Although alcohol is toxic to fruit flies, it's even more toxic to wasps, which, unlike fruit flies, have not evolved a high level of alcohol tolerance. So, if the larvae eat enough alcohol-rich food, it can kill the wasp egg and keep it from hatching. Apparently, fruit flies are not the only fly species to use alcohol to protect the young. In fact, it seems that most flies that eat rotting fruit use the alcohol defense against wasps. So, fruit flies are not unique in this regard, but they're still mighty impressive. Electricity is the physical flow of electrons referred to as an electrical current. Electricity is an energy carrier that efficiently delivers the energy found in primary sources to end users, who in turn convert it into energy services. Electricity can be created in three main ways. The most common is through electromagnetic conversion, where electricity is generated by moving an electric conductor, like wires, inside magnetic field. The most practical example of this is a generator connected to a turbine. The turbine provides the motion required to move the conductor in the generator. This energy for motion can come from various technologies. For example, wind turbines, hydro, or the steam created from heat produced in nuclear fission or coal combustion. Electricity can also be created through a chemical reaction. An example of this is a battery or fuel cell. Finally, Electricity can be created through solid-state conversion, where electricity is generated using the structure and properties of a solid. A specially constructed solid consists of different molecules packed closely together to create an electric current when stimulated. An example of a technology that utilizes solid-state conversion is a solar PV cell. It is important to note that electricity is the same regardless of how it is produced. So, the electricity generated from an electromagnetic generator is the same as that from a battery.